I'm really interested in in learning um, about some of the things that you've been doing over the past few years, because I know you're you're an inclusion and accessibility expert. And for anyone for anyone who doesn't know this, uh, this is this is Deborah Rue, and I'm going to push the record button now. There we go. So it's quite weird for me because I'm streaming live on YouTube and I'm recording at the same time. There's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. So this is, this is Deborah Rue and she's CEO of Rue Global Impact and you're a disability inclusion and accessibility expert and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited being on your, your first YouTube live show. It's not my first, but it's my first with Zoom on this channel. Oh, I, see. I mean, I've done a few, I've done a few, but not, but not actually using Zoom because I just upgraded this morning. So we're going to talk about uh, tech for all, digital inclusion, disabled inclusion, and all these kind of things, because I know you're, you're really big on that. And uh, it, it's so important right now, more than ever. Yeah. It really is. And, you know, we kept nagging. I sort of felt like I was nagging everybody to please work on making sure your technology was accessible to everyone. Let's stop deciding certain humans don't matter because people with disabilities add great value to society and have for many, 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 many years, forever, ever since, you know, humans started. So I think it's unfortunate that we keep deciding certain parts of our population don't matter and we're not going to include you. I think that's, you know, I think that's just not good for society. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. And, and also, you know, I mean, as far as like all of the technology companies are concerned, they, they, they want people who are from all walks of life so that they can actually uh, tell their story for them. Right. I mean, they, they don't just want like a white male who's, who's 50 years old and he, he's a, he's a, he's a chief finance officer to tell a story. They want, they want everybody to be able to be included. Right. Like that's kind of, kind of where, Certainly influencer marketing communications is kind of going, you know? Yes, I agree. And and I often say to some of the large global clients that we work with, you know, what I say about you is probably going to be more impactful than what you say about yourself because people are suspicious. They're very suspicious of large brands. And so if I'm saying it and then grounding it with the information I have, it, it's more credible. It's more credible than, you know, uh, the technology company saying it themselves. And also technology, as we know, it's very expensive to build and to create and to expand and to keep it doing everything you want it to do. So why not learn from your customers? And like you said, this is not just about one segment of the society, you know, bringing in diverse teams, we know, help you creative, more productive, and it allows more of us to use your technology. And by the way, we are probably going to use your technology differently than you thought about using it. Some of these voice technologies, you know, they thought, okay, well, you're going to use it to get recipes and to do this and do this, but they didn't think of, could it be used to keep people safe and independent and living on their own and all those things? Oh, so you can learn from your customers if you would listen and include us. Yeah, I agree completely. I think everybody has 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 value to offer, right? And that's the that's the biggest thing is 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 actually the whole the, everything's changed like in 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 the blink of an eye is it's it's changed. And I think that the companies who who are not who are not actually investing in 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 sharing the right messaging, helping people to kind of get through this, this situation are the companies that get a full flat on their faces really in, in, in the future, you know? I agree. And, and some of the statistical information I'm hearing, it's pretty frightening. I know in the United States the they're predicting, you know, 50% of our small businesses will fail. Well, small business is the backbone of the United States. So that's troubling. And by the way, the large gigantic corporations, they need the small businesses as well. And so, 
you're right. In a blink of an eye, everything changed. In the blink of an eye, we realized we are all interconnected. Oh, wow. We really do need to work together. Let's pull down our nationality. You know, it's all about one country. No, it's not. It's about the world and about making the world work for everybody. And technology is such a great equalizer. So yeah. why would you build something that 15% of the population can't use. That's ridiculous. Why would you waste money like that? Why would you assume, it, and, it, and we talked about it a little before we went on air, Nathaniel, when we were talking about getting seasoned by the world and learning. And uh, the, the reality is most people that, um, most people with disabilities were not born with disabilities. My daughter was born with a disability with Down syndrome and she's, she's a little rock star. She's an amazing woman. But only 20% of people with disabilities are born with them. Most people acquire disabilities after living their lives. And when you lose your sight later in life, that is going to allow you, I mean, you're going to have to figure out how to use your other senses more effectively. And it makes you actually a, a, a good problem solver of complex problems. Isn't that who we want? working for us and buying our products and using our products and saying, well, by the way, have you ever thought about using your product this way? I mean, it, it's just, it's about innovation and creativity. And I would, and dare I say, it's the right thing to do. Well, that's boring to say, but. Well, it is. I mean, I was, th I was thinking the other day, right? Like I was, I was in the kitchen and I was thinking, well, you know, I really need to, I really need to set myself a shopping list. Yeah. OK, and I really need a shopping list on, on my phone. And I wanted to record one using like my iWatch. Right. And I was like and I was like, but is there an app that does that? Like like it's like, well, OK, I can set a task reminder. Yeah, I can send a text. I can send probably send an email, but I don't I don't really do that that often. And I can check my pulse and I can do all these amazing things. But actually, the practicalities of it in this state of affairs, I don't really want to use my phone when I'm in the supermarket because I'm kind of a bit paranoid about like touching things and, and, and right. stuff like that. So I need to like clean my phone when I get home, you know, put my clothes in the wash, uh, jump in the shower. Yeah, leave my, sh leave my shoes at the front door. You know, all of these all of these things that a few months ago were just like, oh, I just use my phone phone you know i'm not worried like nothing's happening but right. so now the the kind of uh the opportunity i think to create um lots of new products new services is huge right now and you know uh, a friend of mine was talking to uh, a very seasoned entrepreneur the other day he owns like a football team or something in america this guy mm -hmm. and he was saying that you know this is much like the 19 uh, 1930s the, the the great depression right when 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 we came out of the great depression more millionaires were made in the at the end of that great depression than ever before in time right so so to me that says let's look at opportunity let's let's pull it all together and 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 get it get it going you know i agree and and i i'm obnoxious i mean i'm obnoxious i'm obnoxious <laughs> you're obnoxious <laughs> i tried to be obnoxious but i'm i am an optimist and uh, being an entrepreneur for many years has beaten some of that out of me. And so I've, I am an optimist realist, but the reality is things are really hard and they're, we're not done and we don't know, we know it's gonna be hard for a lot of people. And so why not look at this as an opportunity to do things better? And, and I'll, I'll ground that with an example. Um, I watched uh, Michael Moore's um, new documentary that he put out for free on YouTube and it's called The Planet of Humans. And I'm, I'm a very big supporter of our beautiful planet, you know, like that we live on climate action and climate, you know, really focusing on climate change. And, and he was talking about the green movement and how it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. And as he, as he explained it all, it's a really good movie. I highly recommend people watching it. Mm -hmm. it I, I've thought, you know what, you should be a little depressed that the green movement hasn't had more impact than we hoped it was. But it was at a time I was watching at a time of the COVID-19 virus, when we've all sheltering, we're sheltering at home, and our earth is healing. 
one day after India went home, the air quality was um, in, it was improved by 44%. They could see the Himalayan mountains for the first time in 40 years. I know. The air quality in Los Angeles, in China, the, our rivers are cleaner. Wow, who knew that if we all sheltered at home, our earth would start healing. Now, what can we learn from that? I think that's fascinating. I agree. But the problem is, is that the economic fallout from this situation, I was reading uh, an MIT uh, report the other day about this, and uh, the fallout is going to create such economic strife that actually we're going to be I I not doing anything really big for the for the environment. So 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 the challenge, the challenge that we face is, well, actually, what can we do as individuals? Yeah. And what I think is we can the people who are working from home now, it's like, look, we're not going back to work in an office. Sorry, uh, I'm not moving. Like I'm in my office. I've got a green screen. I can I can do what I want. I'm not going anywhere, right? So right. so it's like, well, well, actually, what you know? Why why are you are you trying to get me to go anywhere? Yeah. What what mm -hmm. what do you want me to go somewhere for when I can integrate my life with you know? everything i'm doing i can i can integrate that into my life like it's my life okay i work for money right but i i need balance in my life and 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 so i think the opportunities are, are, are pretty are pretty big there right but in terms of like disabled people right now and getting in front of a camera and stuff like this has evened up the playing field for, for them and many, many small businesses who don't want to spend money like going out to go and visit people, right? Yes, and you're you're absolutely right. The the cool thing about it is like even with my company, the majority of my employees are people with disabilities, and we've been teleworking since 2001. I mean, this my company right now has only been in existence since 2013. I had a company before that that also was a smart technology employer. Um, because we're, we've always been about technology, but we've been doing this. So we're experts at this. We know how to do it. And, you know, and a lot of companies are scrambling because they're so inaccessible and that their employees are struggling to get their work done because we told you to make things accessible, but it was for those people with disabilities. Come on, there are over a billion people in the world that have disabilities and it doesn't mean wow. we're broken. It means you're human. It means you're human. In the United States, one in four American adult Americans identify as having a disability. And so the numbers are big. Most people, to be honest, most people don't want to be part of this community. And that's a shame too. So we have to break down the barriers, but there's all this intersectionality too. You know, there are people that, there are women with disabilities. There are African-Americans with disabilities. There's people that are part of the LGBT community that have disabilities. It runs across everything and it means you're human. So if you're creating technology for humans and you're not making sure that you're fully accessible to humans including humans with disabilities then you are you're wasting some money you're wasting a lot of money and you're you're not going to be as um, effective moving forward yeah i mean everything's all about inclusion these days everything is because yeah. in order to communicate with a full spectrum of of society you need to understand what people's day-to-day -day problems are. It doesn't matter what business you're in, you're always going to find people within each of those demographics, right? Like that's, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Yes. I, I've told this story and I've, I've told this too many times, but so far I haven't found any better stories to tell, but it's just a great story that I got from um, my podcast, Human Potential at Work, I interviewed Sandy Carter, who's with Amazon. She told me the story, but Mattel wanted to take one of their Barbies and give, give it artificial intelligence. And so a small team of programmers, you know, programmed Barbie so that she could answer different questions and she would have artificial intelligence. And then they brought in some, um, some potential customers, a little girl, for example, and mm -hmm. Barbie's going to have a, the Barbie with artificial intelligence is going to have a conversation with this little girl. And so Barbie says, uh, you know, like we would say as adults, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the little girl says, I want to be a computer scientist. And Barbie says, well, have you thought about a career in fashion? Well, <laughs> when the women were finished ripping them apart, yeah. really? 
because women are great in technology and STEM and the sciences. Yeah, they really. are. Yeah. But we found out that it was that that Barbie was programmed by a small team of males. You couldn't consider any diversity in your team, any diversity at all. If you'd had one woman on that team, one woman, she would have known immediately, mm -hmm. we're going to kill you if you do that. That's ridiculous. We are not putting up with not being included anymore. But diversity equals innovation and creativity. And I, I say diversity in the largest sense of the word, diversity from different cultures, different backgrounds, different religious beliefs, different colors of skin. You love different people, people with disabilities. God, diversity is so beautiful. We got to stop acting like it's a, an add-on when it's convenient for us. Right. I mean, I think also certainly with, with AI um, to eliminate like bias, right? Like I know you're big into AI and you, you're big into like ethical AI and, and these kind of things. And, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, involved in that kind of space as well. Right. So, so, you know um, I was, I was on a panel uh, round table discussion with IBM and some very, very clever people from Wired and all these fancy magazines and things in like 2015, right? And that at that point, I was kind of scared about AI and I was frightened about, about uh, robots taking jobs and things. And I wrote very prolifically around that, uh, around that area. But now, after reading The Second Machine Age, after talking with, with you and with other people like uh, who, who are big into AI and, and, and ethics, like Monique Moreau, who's, who's, who's big into that, like ex-Cisco engineer, um, patents within her name and stuff. Like, now I'm not as frightened yet, but the thing is, is that um, what I'm frightened of is I'm frightened of people not adapting fast enough to, to, to move from... Uh, perhaps a job they're in now into a job that could could exist with the technology that's available right so that that frightens me because people aren't they're not they're just not learning because there's a there's a there's an apathy in 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 society and and i have issues with apathy yeah if you want to get somewhere right don't just sit on your ass and expect everything to like fall out of the sky you need to do the work right we were talking about this before yeah Yep. Got to do the work, even if society <laughs> doesn't think you should be paid for it. Lord forbid we be paid for social good work. And I am so tired of that. But, and I've written about that and talked about that a lot on my shows too. And, but the, I was worried about artificial intelligence. Like you said, I, I was, I'm hopeful about it, but I was worried about it because we don't have good data sets for different types of people, like people with disabilities. We know that there are unconscious and sadly conscious biases built right into the artificial intelligence. I was worried about all the jobs that we were going to lose because people weren't going to be, you know, they, they weren't going to be trained fast enough to do the new jobs. But then what happened was this like COVID virus, uh, you know, this COVID-19 came in, uh, 33 million Americans have lost their job. Um, you know, the, the numbers are really frightening, but it, I didn't expect that was what was going to send us all home and so many people were going to lose their jobs. So it's now happened faster. And I'm actually encouraged that artificial intelligence, certainly artificial intelligence for good, for good. And, and you know, and I'll say, Nathaniel, I feel sometimes like I'm such a nag about this, but the younger generations are saying, we're not going to work for you. We're not going to purchase from you. We're not going to support you. We'll actually get on, you know, social media and we'll attack you if you're a bad corporation that are doing bad things, that you are sexually abusing women and, and you know, not doing anything about it and covering it up, which is bad. You know, the if you continue to not hire a diverse workforce and blah, blah, blah. But what's happened, all that disruption we were expecting, Nathaniel, yeah. well, it's happened. It's happened yeah. now. And yeah. now- we are starting to open up in the United States, even though we haven't hit our peaks. That's a whole, we won't go into that, but people are really frightened and they're saying, well, I don't care if the government says to open up or not, I'm not doing it. I am hearing that over and over, but so technology, technology, we got to rethink what it means and how we use it and how we can help each other with it. And these technology companies are going to be more important than ever before. And they do need to find their soul and keep their souls. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a very, very big, big conversation because then you go into the minimum basic income conversation and then you go into, you know, but it's like, actually, surely everyone on the planet should have minimum the minimum they need right so so th- let's look at let's look at the big picture right now which is all these office buildings are, are going to be closing you're going to have lots of new businesses which are going to be like you know retrofitting the 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 office buildings you're going to have uh, all sorts of new new enterprises right which are going to in essence become I think the next wave of of of, of startup businesses are going to grow you know rapidly right because the access to to um, technologies, the access to people right now as resources as well to partner in in in, in companies and stuff is 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 huge because people have time on their hands. But I'm scared that in two months' time things are just going to go back to normal, and this is the biggest problem. But but I I I don't think they will. But I, but I'm kind of I'm. I'm I, I think the new normal is 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 kind of uh, going to be interesting, right? And it's going to take a while. And I, I would say, you know, a few things that I I I I think 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 all the time. But I heard a statistic that forty percent of children during these times of crisis, forty uh, percent of children don't have access to digital education. So unfortunately, depending upon the pockets you're in, yeah, too bad for you. You're not going to get educated. That's ridiculous. Yeah, How can crazy. we do this for our society? Why do we think whether or not universal basic income is the right thing to do? I do know that the people that are the most vulnerable are the ones that are now on the front lines taking care of us. You know, the African-American yeah. single mom taking care of her children, loving her children. She's working three jobs on the front end. It's what we're seeing happen is once again, the disparity that always happens and you're an undesirable. It's uh, once Look, I can't two, help being undesirable. I'm really sorry. I know it's so, <laughs> so ridiculous. And one time on Twitter, uh, which is, of course, where we met, uh, white privilege was trending. And I thought, are you brave enough to go into that conversation? Well, that's a big know? that's a big conversation, isn't it? Because it's because it's like, well, OK, so us in the West, we like to think the opportunities everywhere and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But but actually, if you are if you are uh, stuck in that environment, you you know, you, you can't get out of that environment. You, you're you're in essence no opportunity isn't everywhere it it's there for the people who have resilience and and but but also it may never be there for some people because they're actually stuck in an environment where it is impossible like you say yeah, right it's impossible. so if yeah. i can't get education if i can't even get the if i can't even get food for my family and sadly with the the way that the United States is handling the COVID-19, our, our food supply, our supply chains are breaking down and people are you know, going to bed hungry, even more people. You talked about these office buildings. Why don't we, and I know that Google just announced that all of their engineers are gonna work from home at least through the end of 2020. I think that what's gonna happen People aren't going to start going back to work. They're going to they're going to want to stay at home and have this work life balance. You want the most talented people. You're going to have to adjust to that. That will take some pressure off of Mother Earth. That'll help us. Blah blah blah. But what do we do with all those office buildings? I know. Why don't we retool them and use them to help people that are homeless and people that are in situations where they're living in places where the crime is high because we're not doing the right thing to educate and employ them. Why don't we use those office buildings to help people have decent lives? Why can't we expect people at least to have decent lives, at least to have access to education, uh, yeah. you know, so that they can better themselves? Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, no, I agree completely. I've got a friend who who actually uh, launched a, a nonprofit over in um, where is it? Over in Africa, I think somewhere. Uh, her, basically, her husband like ran away with her three kids and like basically just disappeared from America and 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 went to uh, to another country, right? And so she was like, "Well, what what can I do about this?" Yeah, and uh, and so she thought, "Okay, I'm going to start a nonprofit and I'm going to I'm going to provide laptops and, and digital skills." Uh, um, two kids yeah in in uh, in this country right 
uh, Tunisia, actually, I think it is. And um, big shout out to Melissa Sassi if she's if she's listening, right? So I love Melissa so, Sassi. Yeah, so there you go, right? So, 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 you know, we've done quite a few podcasts and stuff together, but the, the, the thing is, is that she did that and it became like her superpower. Yeah. So, you know, if anyone's sort of listening to this and they're, and they're worried and they're stressed, it's like, well, look, you know, stress and worry, it, 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 it can be a catapult in your life to push you to do great things. Yeah. Like, and it's like some of the things that you've been putting off doing, right? Like going live on, on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you know, whatever it is, just get on with it. But you've got to have something interesting to say. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you've got to be, that's why I like your voice. You've got to be a light during these times. People are so freaked out and so scared. And they just, I mean, we just hit 80,000 deaths in the United States and we're still going and we only have 340, 320, 340, you know, million people. So it's, it's troubling to watch and people are so scared and they don't know what's going to happen to the economy. They don't. So, and you and I talked about it. Sometimes we, we just do the work. We do the work. I, yeah. I for years have been pumping money into my company and my company has had, you know, success. We, you know, but I just always knew that we can make the world a better place by working together and to stop. Yeah deciding certain people matter and certain people don't or deciding that our earth doesn't doesn't deserve to be, to be protected it's it's just ridiculous and technology is so wonderful what we can do with technology and then there's the rainforest connection which is um it was actually supported by Huawei, but it is a, a nonprofit group in Texas that put up these solar panels using old phone technology, and they listen in the trees for chainsaws so they can stop the illegal chainsaw, you know, people from cutting down our mature trees that are the lungs of our planet. So yeah. great things can be done with technology, including the older technology, to make the world work better but we got to protect our living planet too yeah i don't know uh, yeah. why we didn't have to see that but well i know, agree clutch but, the hoax. yeah Ridiculous. i mean <laughs> i i do i do agree with you but i think i think that um you know we're in we're in a very dangerous place right now because we can either we can either go back and 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 almost embrace business as usual or we can say well actually i really really didn't need to travel so much. I really didn't need to do all these things. Yeah. And I didn't need all those items, but then, but then actually it, it's going to, that will implode. Yeah. Like it's going to create a recession of its own. If consumerization right. dies, then we're going to create a massive problem on its own. Yeah. So I agree. the thing is, I agree. so you're, you're an expert in basically hiring uh, people who are disabled right like that's 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 in essence what you've what you've been doing through through your your sort of it's like your purpose in life right so so that must be that must be very very rewarding i will say yes i will say i started out i actually I do specialize in making sure that people with disabilities are employed in your workforce, but it's a little different what I talk about because I want to make sure that you're including people with disabilities in your technology. Um, so it has to be accessible. And by the way, captioning, captioning is so powerful. 80 to 85% of videos are watched with the sound turned off. So if you caption, we all get the message. So I'm more about also encouraging big brands to do better in the world and to do tech for all, a tech for good, AI, AI for all, um, and education and focusing on the sustainable development goals. So it is about employment, but it's only a small, a small piece of it. I am an employer of in technology with disabilities, but I hired them because they're so talented, right. you know? And so, but we also are very involved in social media and telling the stories of the brands that are making a difference. And I will tell you this, uh, what I spent years doing was trying to catch big corporations doing good. And I had to like, look for it. I had yeah. to search for them doing good. And I'll have people say, well, you shouldn't support that corporation, Deborah, because they're doing all these bad things. Well, at a certain point, I was just trying to teach corporations to do good for goodness sake, will you do more good? Because corporations are made up of people. 
But now, um, now that everything's shifted and everything's changed, we have all this adaptions going on. I think it's an opportunity for technology companies to sell more technologies because I think people don't mind buying during the crisis, but they're getting more discerning. I don't want to buy it just to buy it. Is this going to help me? Is this going to help my family? I think they're getting more discerning on how they spend their money. But I, the, somebody said to me, can you believe the United States government is giving, um, you know, money out to help us, right? And they're like, why don't they just give it to Amazon because it's just going to go right to Amazon, a study said. And I said, but wait a minute, in the middle though, we are actually going to get goods that we need for our families. So it isn't just going to one big corporation. We are deciding how we're going to spend the money and we're spending it on technology. I think probably more money is being spent on technology right now as people figure out how to work from home. And I just don't believe that, I don't believe everybody's just going to go back. And in the first place, people are going to be afraid to go back to the buildings. Uh, they're going to be afraid. I, I hear it all the time here. Well, I don't care if the are the Virginia governor starting to open things up slowly um, on Friday? I'm not doing it. I'm a, I, I don't think my family's safe unless until we do the testing in the United States and we know we're safe. People are going to be afraid to do business as usual, and it's going to go on for a long time. And yeah. the economic yeah. impacts, as you're saying, oh. Wow. Well, I do worry. You know, I do worry about. Um, I do worry about the third world, and I worry about uh, a lot of people because it's like, well, actually, you know, us in the West, we've. I mean, in England, we're very lucky. We've got we've got a government that is that is really helping a lot of people. Yeah, you've got businesses that are helping people. You've got a, an air of caring in the environment, which is which is quite strange. I mean, you you know, you walk down the street and actually talk to people right now. Yeah, you you know, you've got hotels that are not open. And, and they're actually giving uh, accommodation to homeless people. The church where I go to church on a Sunday, normally they're actually do, doing uh, breakfasts and lunches and dinners and things for the homeless yeah, in, in, in the city, right? But the thing is, is that there are a lot of people out there that are that are that are furloughed. They're not able to work. I mean, I'm, I'm just about to to do an interview with my friend later, who's a deputy manager of like a restaurant, right? And and he's he's a really nice chap. He started his own podcast, yeah. And he's doing the work right. Like he's actually he's actually doing. It. And it, and it doesn't matter if you are disabled, if you're abled, if whatever, right? You need to do something, yeah. Because otherwise, you're going to go crazy if you if you if you're stuck indoors. You know, you need to do something, yeah. I agree, and I think what's really important about what's happening right now is a lot of people have had time to think. They've had time to think, even if you have children running all over you, I think they've had time to think about what did I want to do? What, what was the thing I could do to make a difference in the world? Who, who am I? I think there's a lot of soul searching that's been happening. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people that are good. They're not going to want to go back to the way it was. They're going to, they're going to want to contribute. And my government, my national, the federal government, the United States, um, um, I do not think that they're doing a good job. We just passed 80,000 deaths in the United States. So I am not pleased personally with the way the White House is handling this crisis, but the people, the communities, the churches, the, the small businesses, we are all helping each other and going yeah. back to community, taking care of each other. There are heroes all over mm -hmm. the world and all over the United States that are doing beautiful things. And yeah. there are many people with disabilities that are adding huge value to these conversations. So they're not just sitting back waiting for you to help them. No, they're out there helping you and helping everybody else. I work with a gentleman, LaMondre Pugh, who has disabilities and he's a podcaster. And he has been putting out some of the most beautiful messages and they give me hope. Sometimes i sometimes I get terrified and it's nice to have people out there talking about things and giving me hope too. And I'm trying to give hope also, but so you're seeing the heroes be the, the, in the regular, you know, people. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I think, I think there is a lot of hope out there. There is, there are a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. I mean, I think, I think looking, looking at the big, the big picture, yeah, which is, 
which is, uh, you know, when did we shut the country down? When did we stop people from coming here? When when did we stop people leaving their homes? Right. You, but right. you've got to actually look at that particular society. And if they are used to being told what to do like that, you can do that very quickly. But like in England, I'm not defending the prime minister. This isn't a political conversation. But what this is, is an understanding of people. Right. And I, and I listened to a guy in Italy. I think it, it was either a, a mayor of a, of a city or it was it was the prime minister. I, I can't remember which, but it was an Italian gentleman. I saw this clip and he said, if we had told everyone in Italy to stay indoors immediately as soon as this happened, we would have had like riots in the streets. And actually, if you look at the type of people in America, that is probably what would have happened. And it even did almost happen. That's had, the point. Right. It, it, and it has happened. It, and those people that went out and they were freeing Virginia and Minnesota and crazy. Well, now they're all sick. And then yeah. some people are choosing not to wear masks and their supporters are not wearing masks and they're dying. And yeah. some people are saying, you know, inject bleach or disinfectant in you. Oh. I'm just saying some people, some leaders are saying this and it's like, so I think one thing that people have to understand is that we really have to really think about who we are as people and what we believe in and what we care about it and who, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? And because there's so much fearful data out there, there's so much fake information out there. That's I, I, and I, you know, I, I was watching you and I are both market influencers and I watch some of the market influencers out there and how they're participating in the conversations. And, and I worry that they're adding more fear to the conversation. And so I want to follow the market influencers that are adding value during the darkest times. And these are dark times yeah. for a lot of People are really, really afraid. You can feel the energy. You can yeah, feel the energy of people being afraid. I and agree. we've only just begun, sadly. But yeah. beautiful things are happening along the way, too. I mean, some of the shows that you've been doing, putting out there, they're so powerful. And we need places that we can go to be uplifted, especially when we get really scared. And we all get scared sometimes. We all do. You might look that fear and just do it anyway. You know, there was an old book that called, you know, the, look fear in the face and just do it anyway or something like that. And I always, it, it doesn't, I had somebody ask me one time, they were about to start a business and they said, Deborah, when did you overcome your fear of, you know, being an entrepreneur and it's all on you and all that? And I said, oh, I never did overcome. <laughs> I just learned to live with it. You know, I just hand it up to a higher power because that's how I make it through the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think the whole thing is actually is actually an opportunity. Yeah. All right, there are people dying, and and I do feel really bad that that's what's going on. Um, but it's an opportunity to digitalize everything that needs to be digital, right? To include everybody that actually wasn't included before. Like, I mean, we've got a program over here in, in the UK where kids who haven't got access to the internet are actually being helped to have that, right? Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's quite encouraging, really. That's quite encouraging. The, 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 I think it's going to be very interesting to see what sort of comes from this. Um, I think a lot more people will be included, mm -hmm. I but too. I think, but I think obviously there are going to be mass, mass casualties. Right. And, you know, I'm trying to do what I can to help people and I'm trying to put out some really helpful content and that's all I can do. Yeah. I can't do anything else. Right. Um, but I think it's important and I, I like some of the other ideas that you have about really trying to help technology companies know who are, who are the market influencers that really have engagement with real communities. And I, I just think there is so many things that we can do. And I also believe that I really, it is hard walking this. It is hard. The losses. I worry so much about my daughter who has Down syndrome. I worry about my husband who has dementia. I worry. But at the same time, I'm sorry that we had to make it so difficult and do this, but we're here. And I think we're going to learn so much and the world's going to be a much better place. And I think a lot of people are going to really say, that is not the life I wanted. Mm -hmm. That isn't the life I dreamed about when I was little. I don't want to do that. 
what did you want to do? Who do you want to be? Well, the, my business failed. My, and we were talking about my business, Tech Access. It was a multi-million dollar business and it fell during the financial crisis. It yeah, failed. I mean, it happened It happened to a lot of people. I think, I think that now people aren't so worried about these things it's like look you know in america in particular uh, yeah it's like oh that happened to you no worries what did you learn from it right oh, and I'm and like that's that's why now i'm kind of like i'm kind of like well you know i will talk to someone and say so what went wrong there and and then and then it's like oh well that's what that's what happened so so then you take that experience don't you into the next phase of your of your life almost right and you just right. get on with it, yeah. And um, and you learn so much from the hardest times. They're yes. so hard. I remember when I was walking that path, and so many people lost money. I lost so much money, and we almost lost our home. It was really dicey. And yeah, yeah. I I drew a little thing on the whiteboard of two people, two stick figures walking over red coals, and I would say to my husband, "We're almost through. We're almost through," because I was the entrepreneur. And, you know, I, I would hear, I, I felt so guilty at the time that we might lose our home because of me trying to do good work, Yeah. but we didn't, we didn't. And I learned so much. I'll tell you something I did learn when I started my new company, Rue Global Impact. And on March, 2013, I learned to never second guess my intuition again. I would second guess my intuition at tech access. And I would think, oh no, that's not logical, Deborah. You should do it the way the business 101 says. And every time I did that, I always lived to regret it. Mm -hmm. I don't do that now. When I started Rue Global Impact, if my instinct or my gut or my, my higher being tells me, my higher guidance says, don't do it, even if it's so logical, I will not do it. I listen now. I listen. I'm very obedient to the higher power. Well, I am. Oh, thank you. It's been, it's been, it's been a, it's been a joy, Deborah. And uh, I really appreciate your time. And let's, let's definitely talk more at some stage in the very near future. I agree. I appreciate your work. Thank you for everything you're doing. We need to be light. We need to be light. We need to be the flashlight, the candles. We've got to help each other. So thank you for you. Thanks for